Thank you so much. Yeah, when I started in this role about six years ago, I had that much experience. <laughs> so now it's a lot more, but it's good. Um, yeah, I'm gonna talk to you all about enabling privacy with security, and thanks for attending. Oh. We're gonna scroll. Okay, so privacy narratives. Um, these are the ones you hear all the time. I've got nothing to hide, privacy is dead, and data is the new oil. So to talk to you a little bit about these, um, the I've got nothing to hide one, you all have something to hide. You all know that, I'm sure, right? That's why you're attending a talk about privacy. Um, privacy is dead. Again, you're here because you know it's not, and it matters, and so we're gonna talk more about why. And then data is the new oil. This one I do actually agree with, that personal data is valuable. So to talk about what privacy is, it's good to frame the conversation. Broadly speaking, privacy is the right to be let alone or freedom from interference or intrusion. Information privacy is the right to have some control over how your personal information is collected and used. I think the important word here to also keep in mind when we're looking at systems is control, that the who has control over the data is really important and key to what enables privacy. So I know within this space, it's also important to consider the context of the Web3 values. So Web3, Ethereum, blockchain, whatever you wanna call the systems, decentralized systems, decentralized web, all these terms, these are buzzwords, but these are the kind of ethos, these values that we hold within the space, which is decentralization and transparency. And these are really important topics to all of us when we're working with the systems. Um, and again, it comes back to that control over the data and the control over what is happening within the systems. Decentralization is something that we all value because it, it, it allows for um, the endpoints, the people who are using the systems, to have a different level of control and that we don't give up certain control to a centralized authority. And then transparency is also really important because we need to know what the systems are doing. This is why we use open source code. And again, it's about the data that everybody can share. If we have public blockchains, we can know transparency, transparent, transparently about what is being done and transacted. So whenever you think about those values, what also comes to mind is, well, how does this work together? <laughs> so that you've got transparency on one side and you've got privacy on the other side. And so how do these two topics really interact within our space? I think this is important for us to reflect on in anything that we're building. Because on one hand, we want to have, be transparent. And on the other hand, we want to uh, like enable personal privacy. We want to have people to have the freedom to control their data, to be able to determine what parts of their identity are shared Shared, what parts of their lives are shared, um, and to, to be able to um, basically you know, present themselves to the world in the way that they see fit. And this is a, an important individual freedom. But on the other hand, collectively, we want to ensure that the power structures that we create are manageable and that they're open and transparent. transparent. And so I think one of the, uh, coming back to this word control, this is how I often explain it to people, that it, it comes to, down to if you have large um, collections of data, especially data on people, whoever controls that, whoever has that, has the power, the information is power for them. And so that that's where we want to think that transparency is necessary in these systems to ensure that the collective, uh, the collective group, that the community has some level of control of what is going on in their system. Um, versus the control of an individual over privacy, over their own privacy and their own data. So um, another thing that we often talk about too that is good to re review is privacy by design. So in the software development life cycle, you go through these six stages. And we talk a lot these last couple days about security, and I know you've heard the term security by design, but coming to privacy by design, it's very similar that Privacy is something that needs to be thought of in the beginning of the system design. Anytime that you're even doing the analysis, you should be thinking about what is the aspects, what are the aspects of privacy that need to be included within the system. And so you can go back to that thought of the transparency versus privacy. On which hand do we need to be transparent? On which side of other data do we need to make sure that it is private? 
So some privacy by design practices that I think are important to use in your approach to your system development or your smart contracts or whatever your, what type of project you're working on is to think about um, what is personally identifiable information within the system. So what could be actually considered personal data, but then also remember that metadata can also be connected to determine things about people too. And then the necessity to minimize what data you need to collect um, and what data is being shared in terms of personal data. And then make it easy. So if you are going to have any privacy enhancing features within your system, make sure that they are usable and convenient for people to use. And then build with security because basically you do cannot have privacy without some level of security. And I'll talk a little bit more about that. And then think about pets, <laughs> privacy enhancing technologies. There's a lot of really great tools available these days for us. We have advanced cryptography with homomorphic encryption and zero knowledge proofs. These are really important um, these are really important types of uh, tools that we can use. Uh, and besides advanced cryptography, there's also privacy enhancing technology and tools that we can use. So in also your development practices and your operational practices, you can think about privacy enhancing technologies there. And that just will generally help you in your development practices too. So a little bit to, to just give you a little bit of an example too about Least Authority. So at Least Authority, we do some product development ourselves. And so we can definitely relate to the privacy by design um, difficulties, the challenges, and what is great about it. So these are three areas of products that we work on. Um, on the secure storage side, we're looking um, at creating things like accountless authentication. So are there ways for people to be able to authenticate themselves without giving away something like an email address, for example? This is one way that you can consider different techniques in terms of privacy enhancing within your systems. Um, Client-side encryption is another thing that we don't want to take their data. <laughs> we want, at least we don't want to take their data clear text. We want to take their cipher text. And so think about when you can do things like utilize encryption, not collect email addresses. Um, these are things that, like I said, a good example of how we work and I think it can be used in other systems too. Uh, and then again, you can see in the secure file transfer example, we also work with identity free, so trying to um, enable people to uh, have that anonymity of some degree or pseudonymity. Um, and end to end encryption. And then with private payments, we're all using zero knowledge proofs. So I mentioned earlier about security. So coming back to, we are here at a security conference <laughs> and security enables control. So when you think about security, you can think about these three points and how they can enable um, privacy within your system. So integrity, availability, and confidentiality, these are the three pillars, you could say, of security. And these different areas are, um, yeah, different things that you can talk about. So integrity is something where you don't want the data to be changed or modified. And so this can be you know, a problem. And then confidentiality is probably another area in which uh, privacy is really spoken about. And so security by design practices, some of these have probably already been discussed this last couple days, um, but it's really important to think about them um, within your system. So we've got threat modeling. If you, This uh, can also be tied to privacy. So what are the privacy needs of your users? What are the privacy needs of um, anybody who's interacting with the system? And so threat modeling is the activity of determining what your actual threats to the system are. So who is likely to attack? What are they incentivized by? How are they incentivized? Um, and then also uh, we've got the principle of least authority. This is our name. <laughs> so least authority, uh, the company also, you know, give no unnecessary powers to um, any system components more than, you don't want to give them more power than is required to do their function. And this can also uh, help with privacy too. And then of course, no spoffs and you want to build something that's quality. Uh, and again, audits, that's been something that's been a big topic today um, about how security audits can help. And I think that there's gonna be some more today also about the incentivization, um, like bug bounties and stuff like that. So also, Least Authority does security consulting. So this is also just another example of how we put into practice um, security by design or help others put into practice security by design by helping them make their systems more secure through these various activities with them. And then I'll just skip over the clients real quick. So um, 
I'm going pretty quickly already. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I just want to come back to the bigger topic of privacy because, you know, at a very technical level kind of conference, uh, it's also really important to come up and to look at the bigger perspective of humans. And privacy is an inherent human right. It's a requirement for maintaining the human condition and with dignity and with respect. That basically, if we don't have control over who are, like who we present ourselves to, how we present ourselves to people, any elements of our identity, that we lose the humanness of who we are. And so while we're building these systems within the space, we're improving them, we're caring about the security, we also need to keep that human element in mind, that if we give up elements of our, if we give up pieces of our privacy, we can't easily get them back, we give up pieces of who we are. And I think that, um, you know, we reflect on the Web2 space quite a bit and we say we're better, we can do things in an improved way. And it's just a call to action to you all to not forget about the privacy side of stuff because this is what makes us who we are. So my contact info, if you wanna talk more about privacy. <laughs> That's it. Hello. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, we have five minutes for questions. Does anyone in the audience have a questions for this lady? Or comments. Or comments. Please bring it on. Raise your hand and I will go to you. Nobody? Hold on. So thanks for your presentation. Thanks. Um, a question for you or maybe anyone in the audience. Um, do you have any specific recommendations for you know, companies, people building dApps on what to do, what not to do? Um, do you, do you um, install analytics, for example? What do you do with your um, wallet's addresses? Please. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, in terms of yeah, dApps, I, I mean, you can we can go back to some of the privacy by design best practices that um, I think it's really important to think about the personal information that you're gathering with the dApp, um, also the metadata that you're gathering. So um, in order to perform the service or the uh, to facilitate whatever the dApp is going to be doing. And so... Um, yeah, think about how the different information is collected and what can be done with it. Um, I know that, that it can be a bit challenging right now because a lot of the transactional stuff is just open. <laughs> and um, so that's going to present some interesting challenges as the dApps become more complex and do more things and we move more things onto the blockchain. Um, and so, yeah, it's, that's again why I just call to all of you to think about the privacy. You might have some really difficult challenges. Um, but yeah, also think about minimizing what you collect. In terms of um, analytics, there are analytics tools out there that can help you do things like anonymize to a, a decent degree. Um, nothing's perfect. Uh, and that's also where you can come back to some of that threat modeling and understanding, you know, what might endanger your users in terms of their privacy um, or funds and things like that. I hope that's helpful. Thank you very much. We have one more question from a gentleman in this side of the cell. Hi, my name is Livio and I wanted to ask how do you see privacy on a public blockchain where we already know that there is data analytics which uh, observe human behavior on chain and based on that they can extract, I mean, and predicts who is it, what it does, and yeah, how can we make this layer of privacy over a public blockchain? Yeah, there's a lot of people working on that problem, luckily. But yeah, I mean, on the public blockchains, the transactional information being public, you know, we, we know now that it's not anonymous, that uh, the data can be collected, um, can be cross-referenced with other data. Uh, in one hand, that's a really, on one hand, on one side, that's a really good experience that everybody has learned, that metadata and that, you know, these pieces of data that might look harmless on their own, um, actually when put together, can create a, a big profile about someone or, you know, give you further information. So it's, it's good that we can learn that as a community. <laughs> um, it's bad because, you know, some of these things are already built that way. Um, and so I know that there are different projects that are working working um, on various privacy um, solutions to that. Um, 
And I think that, again, this is where it's just really important for everybody to be thinking more about privacy in, in general and how to apply it to the systems because we can't solve it so easily. And the coming back too, to the privacy versus transparency thing, that in some cases maybe we don't want things to be private. Maybe we do want them to be public because it helps with that balance of control and power. So, yeah, I don't think that there's easy answers at the moment, but I think that more experimentation is necessary, more solutions to be in built is necessary, and it's really exciting about advanced cryptography being used in solutions, because I think that that holds a lot of promise. Wonderful, thank you very much. Uh, we don't have time for further questions, so give her a round of applause, and thank you very much for coming. Thanks so much.